Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. Yeah, it's been way too long. I can't even remember the last time I put out a show. Um, back on the set, um, and, and honestly, it's been up until maybe, what, two-ish weeks ago that everything has been done with the house. Uh, quick update, if you haven't watched uh, earlier episodes or hadn't kept up with anything, um, I did an episode after all the hail damage, but we got struck with hail in April in my neighborhood uh, pretty badly. One of the, one of the worst hits, one of the worst hit areas uh, in San Antonio. Um, so yeah, they're still doing work in the neighborhood, but we had uh, glass that had to be replaced. Uh, flooring, actually carpeting was replaced because there was so much glass. They basically said, you're not gonna get all the glass out of the carpet. So we had that all replaced. Um, and if you've seen some of my pictures, it's with the laminate flooring, which is gorgeous. Um, and a brand new metal roof, which we already had a metal roof, but because of all the dings and dents that are in it, um, no, no, there was nothing, no holes, but because of all the damage that was actually done to it, they said you have to replace the roof. So it took until two weeks ago, about well, me, yeah, uh, about, well, actually last week for them to finish everything. Um, so what that meant is this set was a staging area for all the flooring. And so I had nowhere else really to do it. I did in the kitchen, um, I did do a, an episode or two or three, I forgot how many, in the kitchen area. Um, but now I'm back on the set. Um, I meant to do some recording with this phone here, but maybe the next episode I'll, I'll, I'll work with that. Um, so that's what's going on. Uh, other than that, it's just been a kind of a weird summer. Um, I don't wanna call it weird, but you know, I went to, uh, went to the, uh, uh, advanced sommelier course, which I don't know if I had recorded anything since then. Um, so I was, that was uh, three days up in Dallas, up the Four Seasons, um, which I love going up there um, and got some great uh, guidance and knowledge um, and all that. And then did TechSOM, uh, the Texas Sommelier Conference, also at the Four Seasons in Dallas. That was about six weeks later, five, six weeks later, uh, also uh, in the second weekend of August. Did my volunteer work up there, as I always do. And uh, they take great care of us and trying to get everything set up for the, uh, for the uh, thing. Um, and then uh, the actual conference period of time, I didn't really do anything with the conference um, uh, itself because I was competing in the TechSum Best Sommelier comp uh, competition, which I did not get first, second, or third. However, I don't believe I finished last, like last time, two years ago. I feel much better as to where I'm at uh, in all that. Um, and then, um, yeah, <laughs> and then uh, after that, just uh, came back and uh, got back into my studies. I have slacked a little bit um, with all this construction stuff. It was, it's just, I don't know, it's just, it's thrown everything off for me, my, my whole, my whole day-to-day um, uh, -day routine. So it's it just been a while to get back into the routine, but trying to get back into it with recording this episode. Um, and then I've got one, two, three, I got four I'm going to record today. Um, this one, I think, and then next week, there'll be one more next week. And then I think I'm going to do the thing that I think, I think the next one is Halloween, or maybe there's one more than Halloween. I got to record that one separately. So of these four I'm recording, one of them will be after Halloween. Uh, and then we're going to get into Thanksgiving and then Christmas, New Year's. Oh my goodness. Um, and then uh, the advanced exam, uh, they've announced two of the dates in March, yeah, March and July. Um, July is the one I'm gonna target for because it will not be ready in March. Plus March for me is a bad month uh, as far as work is concerned, whereas July is usually a pretty easy month. Um, so I'm gonna do that. Uh, well, I have to apply for it. So hopefully we'll get into that. All right, so let's get into some wines real quick here. Um, wow, am I really pegging that? 
I am. I'm really pegging it. So we're going to bring that down a bit. Okay. Hello. Test. Da, da. All right. So hopefully the first four minutes weren't too bad. I mean, I, I do a lot of post work. Uh, looking at the green screen behind me, I had a picture when I started, before I started recording. It, the, we have blinds instead of curtains now. So um, I had these, I had the, the blinds. I don't, they're not so bad now. Huh, maybe I just timed it just right. But the, the, the shadow of the blinds was coming through on the green screen. I can't see it now, but on the camera, they're totally faded. Um, so, and I've got, you know, sunlight. I've got LED and, uh, you know, incandescent light. I got three different light sources all competing. I look, I think, kind of orange right now. So that'll all get fixed in post. Anyway, so let's get into some wine. Let's quit uh, jabbering, jabbering. All right, so this set of wines, uh, they were donated to me um, by HB Wine Merchants. Um, they have donated other wines to me in the past. Um, I'm trying to find, uh, make sure I get all this. All three wines we're gonna review today have a suggested retail price of $14. So uh, much apologies to everyone who has sent me samples. Um, I've got three sets of samples. Uh, this is set one to review. Uh, so I will get to them uh, pretty much in the order that they were sent to me. I think these were the first ones and the next week will be the second one. For sure the third episode is the third samples were sent to me. I haven't said yes to anything else because I know I haven't been reviewing stuff. Oh, I've got the core event over here. Forgot that. All right, so let's get started with this. Let um, me look up the fact tech sheet. All right, so uh, first of all, this is um, Ferriton Pere et, et Fil. Pretty sure I pronounce, I pronounce that right. Uh, so Pere and brothers, or I guess father and son? Father and son. Ferriton, father and son. Sons. Or whatever. Anyway, uh, is their Cote de Rhone line of wine? So Cote de Rhone means that it can come from anywhere in the Rhone Valley. However, the vast majority of the Cote de Rhone grapes or, or grapes that are in Cote de Rhone uh, appellated wines come from the Southern Rhone, uh, whether it's white or red. Uh, reds are pretty much like Northern Rhone is basically Syrah. And then for whites, you got some Viognier and maybe some other stuff, but. You know, most of the stuff is from the Southern Rhone. Um, this is the 2000, well, let's kind of talk about these guys first. Uh, they were founded in um, 1946. I'm just gonna double check uh, my stuff right there. Uh, by Jean or Orange Ferriton. Uh, I started with the purchase of three quarters of an acre in Hermitage or Hermitage. Um, and those wines are still, some of those wines are still producing fruit. Uh, he passed it on to his son, Michel, uh, or Michael. Um, who in the tough economic times in the 1960s, with vineyards being abandoned, bought additional land in Hermitage and Crows Hermitage, and later San Joseph in the 1970s. Uh, one of the early pioneers to make and sell estate wines, uh, he built his reputation as a quality house. Uh, is headed by uh, today. They're headed by uh, enologist Damien Brissette, uh, supported by a young dynamic team with an average age of the mid 30s. Um, and at, at Ferriton, they use the older spell, spelling of Hermitage so as an Hermitage without the H to distinguish their single vineyard estate wines from their Ludite Negotiant wines, Hermitage with the H. Anyway, so they have a wide range of uh, wines that they produce. Uh, this is more, call it entry level, because um, you're not getting Hermitage for 14 bucks. Uh, or, well, yeah, you get white Hermitage. Um, Anyway, um, they have switched to biodynamic farming, uh, and I want to say that was in the in the nineties. I I've skipped over that. Uh, uh, and then Chaboutier uh, bought the estate in two thousand three. Hold on, one of the other facts she actually says it. Two thousand four, Michel Chaboutier bought the estate, uh, but he also early on helped them with uh, with the um, estate before he actually bought it. All right, so let's get into um, the wines. So this wine is 2015, uh, Ferriton Pere et uh, Cote de Rhone, uh, Samorens, which I don't know what Samorens means because when you look it up in Google, it only brings you to this winery. So I'm sure, you know, 
if I had really great French knowledge, I would know what that word means, but I don't know. Um, 2015. So what kind of wine is this? Well, it's a white wine from the Rhone. It's not Chardonnay. In my head, I kept thinking Chardonnay. I don't know why. I know better. Um, anyway, uh, so this is a blend of white Grenache. So there are uh, there are other colors of Grenache than red. Um, and Claret. Uh, there's a wine, there's a grape called Claret. C-L-A-I-R-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. And uh, it is a white grape, or it produces white wines. Uh, can I go over some of the other stuff in here? Uh, they say they have essentially a clay limestone, limestone soil. Uh, after they press the grapes, uh, the must is cold settled for 48 hours. Uh, fermentation, whoa, fermentation temperatures are controlled. Guess I dropped the base and not the, oh yeah, drop the base. You know what fishermen do? They drop the bass. If you're not a musician, you don't understand. All right. Um, yeah, because anyway. Um, I, I know I amuse myself too many times on stupid stuff. Uh, fermentation temperatures are, are controlled, so they, they have temperature controlling. So instead of just letting it ferment and hope that the temperatures don't get out of control and that things stop and get stuck, they, they control it. Uh, they mature in the vats without malolactic fermentation, uh, early bottling at the end of winter, and that's it. So this is not supposed to go through any mallow. Now, uh, when I was pouring the white wine, there was, there was like some fizz, but I'm going to say that's probably from the Corvin more than anything else because there's definitely no evidence of any gas or sediment or aka flocculation. That's more of the gas part, I think. Anyway. I had to look up that word so many times. Like, what in the world? Flocculation. Where do you come up with that? All right. Um, so, yeah, nice, nice, pretty golden hue. Very yellow, golden. It's kind of hard to really see like that, but yeah, it's pretty nice color. All right. So, let's check it out. I would call it a moderately to a fairly intense nose. This is all room temperature. I didn't chill any of the wine, uh, at least none of these wines. Um, one of the wines I had, I, I had in my my wine cooler, so it'll probably be close to proper serving temperature here soon. Uh, just mostly tropical types of fruits, especially uh, melon and cantaloupe rind, apricot. So you got some tree fruits in there. Peaches, white peaches, things like that. So, you know, nice, a nice uh, fruity aroma, but I would also call, I would also say there's some, some white flowers in there. Definitely some floral components. I don't really get any spices overtly, but I think there's a little bit of spice there. It might also be just like maybe the alcohol kind of little, little nose burn there, um, which I don't know what the alcohol is on because it's on the text sheet. On the back, we're at 13.5, so it's not high alcohol. We're talking moderate-ish, uh, medium, medium plus on the alcohol. Um, but yeah, I'd say there's there's maybe maybe a little bit of spiciness to it on the nose. But you know, this is room temperature, so things tend to be a little more prominent. Very clean wine. Definitely this is chilled. It'll be a little bit calmer. Um, great acid to it. I'd call it a medium medium plus at the at the at the lowest. We'll call it high acid. My mouth is really watering. Um, very much the same flavors as it is on the nose. You still got the melons, you got the the, the cantaloupe, um, uh, uh, apricot um, type of stuff. I, I, I would say probably more peach than apricot, really. Maybe some nectarine, yeah. I know I'm not supposed to use maybe, but I'm not doing the grid. I'm, this is a review. We have we have started a new psalm group, by the way. Um, we meet every Monday morning at 9 a.m. Um, awesome person who has moved to town. Super excited that he's that he's been here for a little while now. His name, uh, his name is Scott Oda. Uh, he's an advanced psalm. Uh, so now we have two 
that in town. I'm pretty sure it's just Scott and Laura. Um, but Scott is actually pursuing his master's, uh, his master uh, psalm diploma because they really do call it a diploma when we get to the master level. So um, it's been great to have him here. It's really helped spur the uh, the tasting group um, or create a new tasting group with that. It's pretty tasty. I mean, I would. God, I'm already that far into it. Um, sorry. I'm just trying to. Whatever. I didn't think I took that much more time, but um, really nice wine. Um, it's got great flavor. It's got great aroma. Uh, get it down to a more reasonable temperature. Um, it'll be very, very nice. Uh, for $14, um, this is a really nice wine. Uh, I do enjoy it. So if you can find it, uh, you should definitely buy it. All right, so let's move on to wine number two. This is also a 2015. Uh, this is just the rosé, same thing as before. Okay. Um, let's get to the rosé tech sheet. Now, this wine is 75% um, Grenache. Uh, and then they don't have the percentages, but the other 25% are a combination of Syrah and Cinso. Uh They say that the vineyards are situated on the right bank of the Rhone with alluvial soils, limestone, sand, pebbles, and clay. Um, I, I, I somewhat alluded to it. All the grapes come from the Southern Rhone, or at least it looks like that from what their tech sheet has. They have this big circle in the Southern Rhone area. I'm assuming that's where the vineyards are even though the winery is in Hermitage. Um, so we got that. Uh, vinification is cold settled for 24 hours. Fermentation lasts 15 days at a temperature between 15 and 19 degrees Celsius. Uh, it is matured in vats. So again, no, um, no oak uh, aging. And don't ask me what, how, how, how hot 15 to 19 degrees Celsius is. But I'm going to say that, why don't we ask Siri? Hey Siri, what is 15 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit? Got my new phone. Looking, Around seven. one degree Celsius converts to about 33.8 degrees Fahrenheit. I didn't ask that. What is 15 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit? There we go. It's 59 degrees Fahrenheit. 59, okay, and what's 19? What is 19 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit? 66.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Pretty cool. Okay, like cold. Uh, because I know some fermentations get up into the 70s and 80s. All right. Um, so I want to check because it looked like it was a lot lower than I expected. All right, great salmon, salmon-y color. Um, not really red, obviously. But also a little bit of copper in it. Get the white background. That'll help a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, kind of a yeah, salmon to copper color. Really nice color on that. Uh, not as intense of a nose as the white wine, actually. I get a bit of strawberry, but it's really pretty. It's a really, really pretty tight nose. I do smell, you know, it's room temperature, white wine. I'm getting the alcohol. It's probably around the same as the other white wine, 13 and a half. So, you know, we're not, we're not talking. Damn, did I? Almost perfect. Almost as well, not perfect, but almost the exact same amount. Yeah, you know, honestly, strawberry is about the only thing I can get. And it's really, really like faint. I mean, a little bit of, I don't call it spiciness because I really think it's more the alcohol burn. But yeah, we'll see how it tastes. Again, pretty good acid on it. You 
more strawberry than anything else. Uh, I went ahead and cheated and looked at their tasting notes. They said the nose has aromas of red berries, raspberries, red currant. Okay, I really got the strawberry. Palette, fresh and lovely attack while displaying lots of freshness, roundness, and aromas of red fruit, strawberry, raspberry, a lot of minerality on the finish. I'll definitely agree on the minerality. A um, little bit of rockiness, you know, wet rock. Um, strawberry, again, is the dominant uh, flavor. Um, I guess raspberry, because it's, 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 it's in my head that they say that. Um, it's really refreshing, especially if it was cooler. Um, but again, you, you know, I drink or I evaluate a lot of white wines at room temperature. It allows you to see really if there's any flaws. Um, they're not the one, even, even with red wines, I mean, you know, because red wines should be served approximately 10 degrees colder than we actually serve normally. White wines should be a little bit cooler than that. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, you get a little chill on this. It'll be super refreshing. Yeah, I know it's October. We're not we're not in the summer side, but you know when you're talking fall, rosé rosé is and rosé really is a wine you can drink year round. You can drink it because it's refreshing when it's hot, but then you can drink it because it's got should have enough savoriness to it um, to pair with you know some light fare um, throughout throughout the holidays. Oh, I got a little little soapiness down there. Yeah, strawberries for the most part. I can see a little bit of raspberry in there too. Um, it's nice, not really complex, at least as far as, you know, what I get right now, but very pleasant. It's 14 bucks. Um, you're not gonna go wrong with it. If you find it, it was uh, worth a try. All right, let's get into the red wine. We'll close that, close that, and now we're on the red wine. All righty, let's see how we're doing on time. Ooh, I can just leave it like that. All righty. I thought my little timer would stay up on the screen, but it's not. It must be a setting I'm missing. I'll play with it between episodes. All right, um, again, this is a 2014. Okay, same thing uh, as far as the all the designations. Uh, grapes here are 85% Grenache, 10% Syrah, 5% Cinso. Um, not a GSM, as we're used to in the Southern Rome, but a GSC. Yeah, I just made that up. We don't, I don't know if they ever use that term anywhere. I've never heard it. I think I used less wine this time. Let's see. Yeah, slightly less. That's okay. More to drink later. Um, again, vineyards are situated on the left, on the uh, left bank of the Rhone. Did they say there was a right bank on the other one? Well, why don't I look up that? Who's he what's it real quick? Yes. So, right bank and left bank of the Rhone. Alluvial soil and gravelly soil. Um, grapes are distemmed and vinification takes place in vats. The extraction is made by punching down to ensure a good extraction of tannins. So, these are punch downs. Uh, maceration lasts around 15 days. That's skin contact. Uh, temperature controlled the vinification. It is matured in vats. So according to this, there are there's no oak. Unless you mean oak vats. Which means neutral oak anyway. Alright. Color wise. You know, it's 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 fairly transparent. I mean, transparent-ish. You know, I mean. <clears throat> If you're just, you know, like Pinot Noir type of thing. So yeah, nice little color there. Just basically red, but a little bit, you know, definitely see-through. Here we go. All right. So very intense. I would call it intense uh, aromatically. Uh, it definitely leads with, with uh, spices and peppers and, you know, black pepper and meats, smoked meats. Um, you know, when, when you're... It's mostly Grenache, but the Syrah is going to add that in there, too. I mean, we're talking Southern Rhone, and this is, you know, these three grapes are used in Chateauneuf-de-Pop. Grenache is 
very typically the lead grape in a Chateau Neuf de Pop. And you don't necessarily have to use all 13 or 18 uh, base grapes in a Chateau Neuf de Pop unless you're, um, who is it? Uh, Cotelet, uh, not Cotelet, uh, the, the parent company of them. Uh, dang, I can't remember who uses all of them. But they, have, they make Cotelet de Beaucastle, um, <laughs> which is basically just a Southern Rhone, you know, blend. That's just not Chateau Neuf de Pop. Anyway, um, but Grenache and Syrah tend to be in, in Movedra and Cinso. They tend to be like the main grapes that are used in there. Then a bunch of other grapes can be used uh, if you like. Yeah, it, it really leads with, with the, the spices, with the, um, the meatiness. Um, cedar box, red flowers, you know, dried potpourri. Um, we'll call it blackberry on the fruit. Um, but it's definitely not, it's definitely not what's pushing through or it's not, it's not, it's not the dominant, um, aroma as far as fruit. I mean, fruit's not the dominant aroma. Basically, palate confirms to nose. Everything's there. Um, definitely the spices, though. Um, like cinnamon, really. Like, you got a bit, nice little, I won't call it heat, but you got some cinnamon in there. Um, I really like this wine. I mean, for $14, I like it. You know, this is obviously not... This is obviously not a shot to the pop. It's not uh, Vaccare or Gingadas or anything like that. I mean, well, those are a little bit different, but we're not talking like, you know, smaller Appalachian uh, Rhone wine, more of a, not, not basic level, but yeah, I mean, it's the, the, the like next step up, just calling it Rhone Valley. Um, well, basically that's what it is, but uh yeah, I mean, fourteen dollars is a good value. I mean, I like it. it's got lots of flavor to it. Uh, I feel it's balanced. It's not it's not overly hot. Um, you know, again, thirteen and a half alcohol. So they they they're they're pretty consistent on their alcohol, which is nice. Very nice. I'm actually bring this. Let me actually bring this. Tomorrow, I may bring both of these tomorrow. We have a tasting group that meets at the first Friday of every month. I might bring both of these tomorrow for the tasting group because that would be nice. I have another wine I want to bring for them though. It's good. For $14-ish, this is a great wine to, to, to have, to enjoy as an everyday wine. I mean, you're not, you're, you're not getting anything too serious. If you want, I'm sure, based upon the quality of these and just you know the overall quality from Chaboutier, um, you get to the higher, get to the higher level wines. They're probably gonna be very good. Um, so yeah, if you see these in the, see these in the store, you should get them. Um, they're great. Uh, they're good value. They're priced appropriately, I believe. All right. That's going to do it for this episode. Um, as always, thank you for stopping by. Um, click the link to friend me up, uh, hit the donate button over there to send me some ducats. You know, I did have some people do that over the summer. Thank you very much. Um, so it felt bad because you donated and then I hadn't done any videos. So now I've done some videos. Okay. So, um, and hopefully to try to be a little more on track with these things, um, for at least the rest, the next couple months, um, click the links below to get more information about this winery. Uh, when you come to the webpage to do that, I don't do that on the YouTube channel. Um, and, uh, that's going to do it. We'll see everyone again next time.